statistical picture. 14 first downs for the 49ers to eight for the Giants. The Giants had the ball more. Three turnovers. One by the Giants, two by the 49ers. And had it not been for those two by the 49ers, maybe the Giants wouldn't have scored yet because they got those two turnovers, and that was 10 points. Gary Carson scored scored one with a touchdown, and then they, they got a field goal off the other interception. Kenny Hill, who had a big 51-yard run back just before halftime, will try it again. This time he'll come from his own six-yard line. The end of the pack at about the 24. Blanchard Montgomery was the first man to hit him. 49ers have really improved on special teams. A couple of years ago, that was not one of their strong points. Even Super Bowl year, it wasn't. But now it is. I think they have that type of team now. You know, we talked about the nine defensive linemen they have. They they all play. I think they're drafting people to just do one thing. To be a third down player, or a second down, a first down, a short yard, a special team. That's the way this team is put together. Sims goes back to throw on first down. He has some time. Ernest Gray had it and lost it. A ball that perhaps could have been caught. Eric Wright was the defender. Well, this is what the 49ers have done so well. You know, this type of thing that you can't hit the guy before the ball gets there. So you see what Eric Wright does. You just stay with him, stay with him. Now, right after the ball gets there, right when it gets there, you go in and you hit the guy from behind in the shoulders and try and knock the ball out. They do that better than any team in the NFL. And that's a coaching point, I would think. Well, it has, you know, because they've been doing it for four years now. Colbert, the man in motion. Draw play to Carpenter. No running room for Rob Carpenter. They maybe got a yard. Fred Dean, who we'll see here, usually gets outside, comes up the field. He has a pass rush move. He starts to do it to Roberts there, but then he sees it's a run, so he caves back in, and he still gets in in the tackle. He thought he was tackling the ball carrier when he was tackling the left guard, Brad Benson. See that? They say he can't play the run. <laughs> he did that pretty well. You don't know who guys are. You just kind of sort them out there and keep the guy with the ball. Find a leg. Sims out of the spread. 49ers showing blitz. They only rush four. Sims is hit just as his arm started forward. The Giants get on the ball. It looked to me as if his arm was started forward already. Jeff Stover applied the heat. They're still all locked up. It's William Roberts down there. Jeff Stover. We did all that work. Here's Jeff Stover, a natural pass rusher. Didn't play college football. He was a shot putter at the University of Oregon. Got a tryout here with the 49ers, and from day one, he was just a natural pass rusher. Looked to me like he had that ball, though. 6'5", 275 is Stover. Jennings back to punt. This one, not his best. McLemore from his own 41. There's got to be a flag on that play. It's got to be a violation against Carlton Williamson. He pushed somebody in the back as McLemore caught the ball. He knew it, it, it happened right in the in front of the official and everyone. I think it was Eric Wright. Mm -hmm. He was right down there. And he Illegal block in the back. Number 21 receiving team on the run back. 10 yard penalty, first down. He knew it because when you put your hands on your hips and walk off like that, that means you're guilty. That means you're guilty. You did it. No doubt about it. Here it is. We'll see it on the right side of the picture right here. You see he started and then he committed himself at the guy. And then by the time he got there, he was behind him. And he knew it. And there's nothing you can do. You can't stop yourself in space. The only thing you can do is cover up your head. <laughs> After you take your hands off your hips. 13 out of 19 for Montana. 49ers first possession of the second half, and he goes right to work. Right. Russ Francis. On the hop. Both Incomplete. Of, yeah, both officials from the side come in. They both said no. 
Russ is smiling that he thought he fooled him or smiling that he thought he had it. it looked like he had it to me. From this side it did. However, it'll be second and 10 from the 33. That's why I was smiling. He said I had it. How can I say I didn't have it? <laughs> I guess you can smile and say other things. Montana is chased. He gets it out to Craig, who dropped it. Incomplete. Taylor, again around the corner, got away from ears. In the last two times they played, the, the playoff game in 1981, and the first game this year, the 49ers had successful blocking Lawrence Taylor with John Ayer. Now today, it looks like Taylor is ready for that. And what he's doing, instead of trying to give a move to Ayer, he's just, he's just bashing right into him and driving Ayers back into Montana. He's getting his shoulders up underneath Ayers. Third and 10. Tyler started in motion, looked like he might have been in motion. Montana's gonna be chased by Marshall, and that's no race. Montana still going. They thought he was going out of bounds. Montana chased by Courier, knocked out of bounds, finally inside the 20. of a yard. Tyler. That scramble, if you could call it that, that run by Montana, probably a better description, was 53 yards. He has two carries for 64 yards. Not a bad average. And that was the longest run of his career. He's a heck of an athlete. That's the longest run of a lot of guys' career. That is a career. For those short yardage back. Second and 13. Tyler lost three. Solomon goes in motion. The Montana back to throw. Picked off by Gary Reasons. Reasons has some blockers in front. Reasons in the foot race. Knocked out of bounds by John Ayers. Montana took a block from Lawrence Taylor, and they're both still sitting on the ground. Taylor is lying on the ground. Montana and Taylor are down. I think that same thing happened to Joe Montana again, Pat. I think on that one, he really didn't see reasons. Here's reasons, number 55, right in the left of the screen. He starts back. Montana looks. He looks all the way. Reasons was right there. Just throws it to him. Watch him switch hands now. He puts the ball out in his left, just like a runner's supposed to. He got a block there from Kenny Daniel. Outruns Bubba Paris, and John Ayers knocks him out of bounds. Lawrence Taylor is still down in the field. Watch Montana. If we stay with him long enough, we can see the hit he takes from Lawrence Taylor. It is close to being an illegal block. But Lawrence Taylor hurt himself with that hit, and he's still down. Third interception of Montana. This one by Gary Reasons, who returned it. 33 yards. We have 12 10 left to play in the third quarter, and the 49er lead continues to be 21 to 10. Lawrence Taylor has made it over to the Giants' sideline. Here's Montana again, and here's what hurt Taylor. Well, the only thing that I can think there is he must have had his foot planted, and as he hit, and as he hits Montana, it's in the upper right hand corner. You see right there, I think he has his foot planted. And he kind of trips there, and the foot stays in the ground, and he twisted the knee on that block. It sure wasn't from the contact. There he is over on the sideline with Leonard Marshall. Giants take over at their own 36. They dodged a bullet. Sims to Carpenter. 
to the 40. Gain of only about four before Ricky Ellison. And big hands Johnson bring down Carpenter. You know, I think so often when we talk about the 49ers, we see them over there still working on Lawrence Taylor. In fact, they're putting the ice bag now on the on the right knee. And they then they'll probably put some sponge on it. And then they'll put some, uh, you know, an ace bandage around it, get some pressure on it. He, the word is he has a bruised knee and will return as Joe Morris gets very close to a first down. They're putting a sponge over Lawrence Taylor's knee. Got tangled up with Joe Montana's spikes on his shoes. The Giants are about a foot short of a first down. It looked right at the end of that play that they did get tangled up and tripped a little. I think that's what happened when Taylor had his foot planted. Well, you're talking about two pieces of valuable merchandise when you talk about Lawrence Taylor and Joe Montana. What the trainer's doing there is he's making a donut to cover the bruise. Then they'll put tape over it and get him back in the game the next series. They're in the short. The give us to Morris. It's a giant first down. Ricky Ellison on the tackle. He's the leading 49er tackle on the season. You know, 10, I think, excuse me, John. 1043 left third quarter. I was just thinking that, you know, you talk about the 49ers, you hear about the 49ers, you think so much offense, but I've really been impressed with this defense. The way they play and, and, and hit and cover and, and play so many guys, the substitutions, nine defensive linemen, they play about seven linebackers, the secondary play in different positions. They're really impressive. Sims to throw. Up fake. Try to throw. He's down in the hands of Dwayne Ford. The fourth sack of Sims by the 49er defense. I tell you, William Roberts, the left tackle for the Giants, is having a problem over here. He's had Fred Dean, and we've seen Fred Dean beat him a couple times. Now he's going against Dwayne Ford. He just didn't get his feet moving. He had his feet in the ground, and he tried to do it with his hands, then he got his arm around him. If you're going to block a guy like Ford, you have to get those feet moving. You can't be have your feet planted in the ground, I don't think. You remember he also had a problem with Jeff Stover. He's got Dean this time. Morris, a sweep to the right. Got up to about the 43. Tom Homo made the stop. Dwight Hicks has not returned. And on the other side of the field, they're working still on Lawrence Taylor. It's a bruised knee. That's why I would see the sponge and the donut then. Then the, the hole covers the bruise and the sponge is on the outside. This is a situation the Giants really don't want to be in this third and long. You, know, you talk about them coming. This is when they really come. And now White Hicks is back. Playing free safety. Here's Sam Look out, Phil. By Lionel Manuel. It is a catch. It is not a first down. It's like it's about a yard shy. Yard and a half, maybe. You know, Phil Sims is trying to talk Bill Parcells into going for it on fourth down. The that... punt team started in, and he started to wave them off. And you saw, if you can read lips, Parcells saying, hunt it, hunt it. Sims wants to go. Quarterbacks always want to go, don't they? And the fans. The quarterbacks, the fans always want to go. Coaches and their parents don't want them to go. Marcel said he told his team during the week, we'll run the game, you play the game. McLemore signals fair catch at his own 14. Elvis Patterson was right down in his face. Here comes Lawrence Taylor limping back in. 30-yard punt, no return. It's game. NFC Divisional Championship game, I could say. The Giants are the wild card team. Pitches back to Roger Craig. Craig is hit down after a gain of about three by Carl Banks and Jim Bird again. You know, you wonder if the the when the 49ers are down in this area, they always seem to run to their right. And you wonder if they're running behind Keith Fawnhorse, Randy Cross, their two Pro Bowl offensive linemen. Or if they're running at Carl Banks, or if they're running away from Lawrence Taylor, or all of the above. I think 
at all has something to do with it. Montana back to throw. Montana chase. Penalty marker goes down. It's Jim Burt who took him down. Fourth sack of Montana. It's a holding violation against the 49ers, I'm sure. This will be an interesting decision for the Giants because they did get the sack. They'll probably decline the penalty. See Harry Carson looking over at Bill Parcells to see if he can find out what his wishes are. Holding, number 71 offense, penalty refused. Third down. Number 71 is Keith Vaughnhorst. You see him here. He's going against George Martin. Martin gets that hand up under. He throws that hand up underneath. Now, to me, that's not holding. I think Martin put his arm in that position. Not what the heck. Early in the, in the engagement, it looked like Vaughnhorst might have grabbed him by the base, the base mask. He has Francis, and he drops it. He had it, but there, there you are, covering your head again. was in the basket that was in the basket and that was one of those deals where he started to run before he caught the ball and that's the worst mistake that you can make on third down you know sometimes on first down but look there's third down he has the first down already all he has to do is catch that ball but you see when it went through is when he started to turn to his right that ball went right through Runniger not a good kick Manuel will feel it in 49er territory Lionel Manuel slips and it's down at the 40 Giants will take it over first and 10 at the 49 or 40, 34 yard punt. By running. That's Eric Wright. You were looking at number 21. But Lott is back at free safety, and here's Joe Morris sweeping right. Gets away from one tackler, only got about a yard. Carlton Williamson brought him down. It was Lawrence Pillars who had the shot at him in the backfield. You know, it's interesting, Pat, as you're saying, Dwight Hicks playing out there at corner again. On the other series, he was playing as a free safety and Lott out of corner, but as he was telling us yesterday, I think when they switched him to corner and Lott to safety, White Hicks really didn't like that switch. But he said, well, if we're going to do it, I want to do it all the time. And I bet he said the same thing in this game. If I'm going to play in championship games and maybe a Super Bowl as a corner, I want to play out there now, too. Second and nine. Sims back to throw. The 49ers on a blitz. Sims looking for Moa come down with it covered by Keena Turner the linebacker batted it away at the last second I think Bill Sims took too much off of that ball because Moat wasn't able to run away from Keena Turner I don't know if he would be able anyway although that ball was right in his hands wasn't it that just bounced right out of the gloves watch Keena Turner you know for years they said that he was the underrated player but now he's in the Pro Bowl this year. So you can't be underrated and be in the Pro Bowl. Sure there can't go over his head. That's good coverage from the very beginning of the play. 49ers blitzing again. Sims rolling right to get away from him. Has it complete to Lionel Manuel. Manuel's inside the 20 to about the 17 or 18. Ronnie Lott made the stop. A gain of 20. Sims is limping now. A lot of pressure on Phil Sims. Not this game pressure either. No, but he zipped that ball in there that time to Lionel Manuel. And one thing about Manuel, you know, Dwight Hicks was saying that these guys come and they kind of lull you. You don't, you don't think they're right. And then they make a quick move away from you. You see what happened on that play? That was Ronnie Lott. He fell down, but then he was able to get up and still tackle Manuel. Giant first down at the San Francisco 19. Sims to Joe Morris quickly by Lawrence Pillars. Pillars was right in his face. Dr. Evil did his evil. Well, it looked like Dr. Evil did the same thing to the Giants that the Giants did to the Rams in Crutchfield last week with Leonard Marshall. But he's going to start in here, and he's coming on a pinch move. You see, the guard blocks out. He just has a free hole to run in. He just slides right down the line. No one blocked him. A defensive lineman love that. When no one blocks them, they go like that. Second and ten. They're still at the 19. Here comes the 49ers blitz again. The Giants pick it up. And the 49ers pick it off. Ricky Ellison with the interception. Sims 
trying to go down the middle, has it picked off. He was trying to throw that ball to Rob Carpenter in the middle. It was really a force because I think Ricky Allison had Carpenter all the way. Watch him. Here's Allison 50. I watch Carpenter come across here. Carpenter stopped. He didn't even keep running. And Sims led him. Ellison was standing there the whole time. That's something I don't think you can charge to Bill Sims. No, that's what you charge to miscommunication or whatever. Ricky Ellison charges that. Hey, that's a good play. What are you talking about? Communication. Montana on first down. Under pressure. Gets it to Craig. Craig is caught from behind by Carson. Kevin Belcher. Shaken up on the last play. The Giants center. Checking his neck. Well, he's had a full day. He's had a play against Mono Tui Asasopo, Michael Carter, Louis Kelcher. They just keep bringing those guys in on them all day. That's just part of their theme of defense. Keep them fresh for the fourth quarter. And they've done a great job of doing that. Here it's back to the Tyler. Tyler hammers into the pile as stop for no gain or very little. the tackler Francis involved in a shoving match with several Giants that's Carl Banks that's the one that's really upset I think that thing started earlier and then it went and then it went on again and again It'll be third down and four for the 49ers from their own 29. Four and a half minutes left to play third quarter. 49ers leading 21-10. Montana with lots of time this time. That'll be enough for a first down to Dwight Clark. Gain of six. They needed four. The guy who's proud of his interception. <clears throat> Look, he puts his name on it. Puts his name on it. Said pick three. You know, they call interceptions picks sometimes. So it's his third pick. Ricky Allison, he'll get that ball that he picked after the game because he puts the tape on it. We're going to play in the playground. We're going to play with Ricky Allison's ball. Here's the fake to Cray. A rush by McGriff. The completion to Cooper. Cooper is hammered by Kenny Daniel and by Gary Reasons. Well, the fans had to wait a long time to do that. That's Earl Cooper's first reception today. And anytime he does anything, they give one of those yells, ooh, and you think they're booing and nothing to boo. They're just cheering for Earl Cooper. So it was interesting to uh, hear Bill Walsh talk about him yesterday. He had been drafted as a fullback out of Rice and changed into a tight end. And he thinks that next year he could be a pro ball player. He says he has really developed both as a blocker and as a receiver. Two tight end offense, including Cooper and Francis. Montana back. Over the head of Dwight Clark. Montana is down. Now getting back to his feet. Kenny Daniel, the defender. You know, you look at these quarterbacks, nice-looking guys, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, nice kid, and you don't think that they're really tough guys. But when they have to take these shots, look, unprotected, that one's not too bad, but it is a jolt when you hit the ground like that. But I'll tell you, these guys are tough guys because there's nothing they, they can do about it. They have to stand there, they have to throw, follow through, look down the field, and they still get those whacks after they throw it. Montana, 16 out of 27, three touchdowns and three interceptions. Faces a third and six situation here from his own 39. Mike Wilson is coming to the game. Montana has Mike Wilson open. And he hammers into giant territory, cross midfield before Andy Hedden brings him down. It was a gain of 13. Now, this is an underneath pattern. You see, what, what happens is Mike Wilson starts up. Now all the other receivers go deep, and he starts up. Then he comes in underneath on his own defense. 
It was Elvis Patterson, number 34, who was on the coverage from the beginning and made the tackle. 2-10 left in the third quarter now. 49er first down at the Giant 48. Mark is right. Lindell Tyler loses to Jim Burt. Banks. Here's a flag coming flying out of nowhere as Francis and Banks get back into it again. Well, that, that Francis Banks thing's been going on about four plays. Delay a game, number 26. Five-yard penalty for spiking the ball while the clock was running. Oh, there's one you don't see called often. Against Wendell Tyler. Wendell Tyler's saying, hey, we're getting a little picky out here, aren't we? That'll move it back to the 49er 45. Second down and 17. Let's see what he did. Well, there's the spike that they're talking about. I guess you're supposed to just leave it there or hand it to the official. Have a nice day. Solomon wide to the left and Wilson wide to the right. Montana gets it out to Wilson. He gets back in giant territory. Bill Furrier got him down. It's about the giant 49, it looks like. Game of six, it'll be third and 11. You know, someone that could have used this guy here, this Mike Wilson, this year was the Dallas Cowboys. They had him in camp three years ago, waved him, picked him up, and he's been with the 49ers. And I, I think had it not been, you know, for the years that Dwight Clark has had and Freddie Solomon, this guy would be a starter on a lot of teams. He's a good player. Sims trying to stay warm. Temperature at game time was 40 degrees, but it's very damp. pressure Montana finds Mike Wilson first down gain of 18 he does that so well does Montana this is what separates Joe Montana from most other quarterbacks he can do this type of thing get by guys now just buy time just fight and still find someone else. Here he finds Mike Wilson out there, hits him on the run. You see, they keep working because Joe Montana has done it, can do it. The receivers know it. They just keep working for him. 49er first down. And 32. Montana fakes, goes deep, intended for Solomon, and a little bit of miscommunication there as Kenny Daniel, number 24, was back deep with some help that time from Terry Kennard. That's a big thing, and that's the thing that we talked about at halftime, is in the first half on that same play fake, Terry Kennard came running up, down near to the back there. That time, they went to play fake, Kennard stayed right back there, and they couldn't get Freddie Solomon. Second down and 10. The 49ers in this situation are very likely to not consider it a passing down. They just as soon run on second and 10. Comes a courier blitz. The vision is to Cooper and Kennard is right there. Block running, you can see, with seven seconds now left in the third quarter. Kennard is limping back. A loss of three on pass completion to Cooper. I think Kennard's getting a, uh, a Charlie horse there in that right, right leg is what's happening to him. But I tell you, that was the difference. You know, in the first half, he went for the play fake. And this half, I think they talked about it, and he didn't go for it. Let's see if we can watch it here. Now, here's Terry Kennard here. The 49ers are going to go play pass. Earlier, he had run up here. Now, this time, when he saw the play pass, Montana goes back. Instead of coming up here, he runs out this way, and he helps here on Freddie Solomon. Now, that's a different type of play. See the play fake here? Now he doesn't come up. He comes over and looks right now for Freddie Solomon. You see? And right there, they had the double, and Montana had to throw it away. So that's the end of the third quarter with a score 21-10 San Francisco. And we now... Another quarter to go. The 49ers leading the Giants 21-10. This drive started at the 49ers' own 22. They've kept it 11 plays. Five minutes, 35 seconds have elapsed. And they have con converted 
successfully on three third down situations in this drive, and they face it again. Third and 14. Clark, shy of the first down by about a yard, Perry Williams came up to make the stop. Well, Clark is upset with himself. He thought he read that thing perfectly, and he doesn't like the spot that he got. He was right there. He was watching that that marker out there because we can see that the marker is right in front of where Clark catches the ball. Now look, he just gets beyond it and catches it, moves the ball up there. Look, he's looking at the spot right now. He wants it right there. You see now they move the marker out of there. Right there he's going to be short. No, he was short. He was well short. They say now it's about a foot and a half, it looks like. 49ers are going to go for it. I think they gave Clark the advantage of the spot on that one. Wendell Tyler comes back in. Clark now has caught seven passes for 85 yards. Fourth down and a lot of inches. Three out of four on attempts for the 49ers on fourth down when they've chosen to go for it. 60,303 in attendance. The second largest crowd in candlestick history. They're going to go. This is not one of the strengths of the 49ers. Offense and short yardage and goal line. Montana never did feel confident with that play. They looked confused in the huddle, kept looking to the sideline. Got up to the line, didn't take, you can't take any chances with this one. So he took his time out and wants to talk it over with Bill Walsh. As you say, Montana never was really comfortable with this decision. Well, it looked like he didn't understand what the decision was. You see right there, I think he says you want a timeout. So now he's looking at the defense. He doesn't like what he sees over there. He kept taking peeks at that defense. So he said, I better take a timeout. We'll talk about it. They talked about it. Decided to put in Ray Wersing and kick a field goal from 39 yards out. Wersing is blocked. The Giants' Pete Shaw has it. Elvis Patterson blocked it. That's the decision they'll talk about after this game is over. Hey, Elvis Patterson came from the left side, and he just blew right free. Blew through there free. Got the right around the corner. The kicker was down. Wershing was down. Watch on the right side of the screen. Here comes Elvis Patterson, 34. He watch him. He comes free, just lays out, and gets right in front of Ray Wershing. Pete Shaw picks it up. Bill Walsh. Not happy with the result. Giants take over. 49ers lead by 11. Now here's the block. Now here's Jeff Stover, 72. He has to block the inside guy here with his hand. Plus he has to bump this guy. But this guy, Elvis Patterson, comes from the outside, doesn't get bumped, comes in here and blocks the kick. See now Stover, the outside guy, 72, he steps down. See when he steps down, Patterson's right by him and he gets the block right there. Watch the kicker, Ray Worsen. Watch what happens to Patterson after he makes the block. He goes and looks for the kicker knocks the kicker right into his car. <laughs> the kicker said, well, they didn't tell me about these things at kicking school. The kicker had two bells rung on that one. Some fraternity, that kicking fraternity. Sims goes right to work. That's Moat. Moat lunges close to a first down. Ricky Ellison on the stop. Moat slow getting up. Nine-yard gain, a little bit more than that. in pain well, you know he's been in the last month of the Giants season he has really come along he's always been a good blocker but he's really developed as a receiver four receptions today for Moat the handoff is to Morris Morris will get the first down not much more Mike Walter on the stop Ray Wershing who took that double knock Counting his teeth, see if he got all that stuff in there that he left the bench with. Looking in there to see if he's still got his balance. Total 
offensive yards. The Giants 172, the 49ers 342. First and 10 Giants at their own 46. Lionel Manuel stood wide to the left and Bird to the right. They fake. Outside to Morris. Morris scoops down the sideline, gets another first down. They're at the 49er 40, knocked out by Keena Turner. That was a heck of a play by Bill Sims there. You know, they talk about a quarterback touch. He really had a touch here because he was getting rushed. But she comes on a roll out here. Now he has to pull up and he has to get the ball over the defender to little Joe Morris. You know, he just kind of got up there and just looped it over there. Just lobbed it over Ronnie Lott's head. That's a nice touch. What they call touch. He's got a touch like a sledgehammer. That's the difference between a thrower and a passer. Sends back. Gets it down the middle. Moat. The pass is incomplete. It was again intended for Morris. Jim Burt. You can tell he spent a long day in the trench. Well, you, you, he has a broken hand. One of those things. I was talking to him last week about Lawrence Taylor would throw the ball way high in the air and Burt would try and catch it. Well, heck, a guy like that. Look, his arms and shoulders are so big he can't even lift his arms over his head. He can't catch the ball. So I said, you, you, you'll never catch the ball. He said, well, it's my hand. I got a broken hand. Showed me the back, no knuckle. Then showed me where it came through in the front. He's even got his gloves taped. Well, that's serious. Sims gets out of trouble for a minute. It's complete. That's Joe Morris. An 18-yard gain. Ronnie Lott was the defender. Okay, Bill Sims, two plays in a row, has made excellent throws. This one, I think he had to come out sidearm on it. The one before, he got it over the defense. Now watch him. He has to scramble here. I think this one he has to get under the defense. Well, it just got right by the defense. Fred Dean fell down. Joe Morris is only listed at 5'8", but he grew to about 6'6", right then. First down, Giants, 49er 22. Morris tried the right side. Keena Turner stopped him. You know, it was interesting. Yesterday, Bill Parcells was telling us that, yeah, I want to be in the game in the fourth quarter. He said, I don't know that the 49ers have ever had any pressure on him in the fourth quarter this season. He I said hope they just blow out everyone early. He said, I hope we can wear them down. The Rams last week thought they would wear the Giants down. I they think didn't. If the Giants get a touchdown here, then it's going to be a very interesting end of the fourth quarter. Sims coming back. Was in trouble. Tomoa complete. About the 12, Carlton Williamson with him. It looks like it might be a half yard or so short of first down. Sims, under heavy pressure, has been able to get away from a lot of it. Zeke Moat, who says he's learned how to run pass patterns. Well, he said the thing has helped. He went through a little slump in midseason. And he said he didn't know if he ever could catch. He said, but Phil Sims stayed with him. He said he worked with him after practice. He says, you can do it. I'm going to keep throwing it to you. He said, if Sims believes in me, heck, i got to believe in myself. Third and short. Mullity in motion. The kid is Kamaris, and he hammers for the first down for the Giants. One. Jack Reynolds made the hit, but they got the first down. That was a little different counter play. You know, usually when you have the fullback, Rob Carpenter in short yardage, you expect him to get the ball, but they go a different action. They kind of turn towards Carpenter and then hand back to Morris, who does the diving. Jack Reynolds looked like he was surprised they handed it to Morris. He was looking for Carpenter, and crap, here comes a little guy over the top. So it's first and 10 at the 11, just outside the 10. They can make a first down without scoring. Morris goes in motion to the left. Sims back to throw. Sims is hit from behind and hammered. He never saw him coming. Dwayne Board and Jet Stover. Board 76 and Stover 72. There's William Roberts. It's been a tough day for him, the left tackle. This time it's on board. We'll see Ford coming from the right-hand side. Offer Roberts there. Sims is just looking down. 
and he gets it from the back side from Dwayne Ford and the front side from Jeff Stover. Sims has been sacked five times. Ford has two of them. Line of scrimmage now is the 16. Sims throws it away in the direction of Lionel Manuel. Sims was hammered again by Stover. Oh yeah, you know, you talk about respect. You talk about Montana and being a tough guy. How about this Phil Sims and the shots that he's been taking these last two weeks? Remember the Rams last week and then here this this week. Boom. Well, he's had he had so many years where he missed part or all of the season because of injuries. This is his first that he's been reasonably healthy all year long. And he's had a good year. Today has been a tough day. Third down. Gray shuffles in motion. Sims retreats and throws. Intended for Manuel Low. Again, he was hit just as he let it go by Fred Dean. Gary Johnson was there with Dean, and they'll go for the field goal. I think they really have to go for the field goal, although they're down by 11 points. But the pressure that they've been getting, they just can't keep doing this. It was fourth and short. Maybe they could go for it. But in this situation, fourth and long, I think they really have to kick the field goal. Now, you talk about pressure on a quarterback. That last series was pressure on a quarterback. 33 yards. This one will be for Ali Haji Sheik. He's already made one. Now that's wide right. The Giants come away empty. Conference champion Houston. All of that here on CBS. Now on first down, let's see what the 49ers do in their own 20. Randall Tyler. Maybe two. Lawrence Taylor. Gary Reason. Kenny Daniel. All involved. The 49ers have a little more than nine minutes left to go with an 11-point lead. This is where most of their runs start to come up. When they get in the fourth quarter with the lead, they start to run. This year, they've run about as many times as they pass, but that doesn't mean it because when they really need it, they pass, and they run to eat up time in the clock. Solomon comes wide to the left. They look in that direction. Montana gets it out to Tyler, who breaks away and gets a first down before he's dragged to the ground by Harry Carson. Down 49ers to pick up a 13. Well, the Giants have to get the ball back, and the one thing you can't do is miss tackles here. You see again, Montana starts to look to the left, comes out here. Watch Kenny Daniel. He comes up, misses a tackle, and allows another five yards. That other five yards got him the first down before Carson made the stop. Now let's see if they start that offensive series with their sweep again. Over. Throw it. Clark. Clark is still on his feet. And again, it's Carson who hustles out there and brings him down, but it's another first down. You know, that was one of the few audibles that the 49ers used. I think they were going to run a sweep. And then Joe Montana looked out there to the right, and you see he sees the corner way off at Dwight Clark. 
because on first down, he just went red, said red. Now, that made it a live audible. Then he just threw it out there to Clark for the first down. He looked out there. I think they were going to sweep to the left, and they audibleized to that out there to Clark. Clark has caught eight passes for 98 yards and the first touchdown of the day. The delay to Craig stopped by Leonard Marshall. Right back at the line of scrimmage, maybe a foot or two, but not much more than that. Well, you haven't heard much from Leonard Marshall today. Remember last week against the Rams, he had the big game, and uh, I think they've been doing a pretty good job over there on him today, Bubba Paris. Bubba Paris, they list at 295, but I think that's conservative. Well, Bill Wall said he's 300 plus. He said he could play best at 290, but he's 300 plus. Second down and 10. Here goes Solomon in motion. Montana back to throw. Almost picked off. Bill Courier was close by. It was intended for Dwight Clark, but he never looked back. Well, remember earlier in the in the game in the first quarter, Bill Courier had one like that. And after he missed that first one, then the 49ers started to operate. But look, Dwight Clark was still in his move. He didn't even know the ball was thrown. He's still working zigs and zags and bumps and stuff. Joe Montana said, hey, Dwight, I don't have that much time. I mean, you give me fake right, fake left, fake right, fake left. I got to throw by then. 650 big down here for the 49ers and the Giants. They need the ball back. Montana was chased by Courier. Gets it to Tyler, and he got his first down. Tyler's still on his feet. He's at the Giant 40. type of thing that Montana can make. Watch here. We'll see Courier here. He's going to come on a blitz. Montana starts back, sees him, and runs right around the blitz. Watch it's a safety blitz. Here comes Courier. Montana sees it. He just runs right around Courier and crap, hits Wendell Tyler for the first down. If this guy isn't the best quarterback in football, I don't know who is. Well, maybe some of the Marino. They might. Ducks inside and picks up about five. Harry Carson on the stop. Here's Lawrence Taylor involved with a fracas. I don't know who it is. Dwight Clark, I think. No, it's John Frank. John Frank had Lawrence Taylor pinned. He had him pinned. Three, one, two, three. Let's see if we can figure out what happened. That John Frank is a rookie. Bill Walsh is saying this guy's always in fights because he always blocks guys and stays with them. He said he can just glue to you. And that's exactly what he did to Lawrence Taylor. Look, he just glued to him. Taylor has him. Frank gets a reversal. Taylor's going for the reversal. Frank gets a pin. Referee says that's it. No more. One, two, three. Well. Hey, what? That should be broadcast on Saturday morning somewhere. I love that guy jump from the ropes and stuff. That was a tag match. Derek Harmon, the ball carrier. Looks like Bill Courier might be hurt, number 29. Block is running now with 5.15 left to play. 49ers clinging to that lead and trying to get more. like Courier when he went to make the tackle he's going to be right here and it looks like he caught a, a, a knee looks like he just caught a knee right in the stomach as he goes to make the tackle watch it right here right there maybe he caught that left knee right below the sternum Derek Harmon was the ball carrier Courier still down 513 left to play Bill Courier up and standing over in front of the giant bench now appears to be okay Patterson has taken his place. Here's the hit. Looked like it was more the the jolt to the head and shoulders, but the knee could have just got him in the stomach. In addition to that, looks like he might be okay now. Third down and seven from the 37. The Giant 37. Montana retreats. Mark is out of bounds. Not got a bounds by Perry Williams. Montana had to throw that ball while backing up. 
Benji Merrill was so upset because he was that close to Joe Montana. He was that close, and that's what's so frustrating for a defensive lineman. You run all that way to catch the guy, and just as you get there, just before you get there, watch him here. See, there's Merrill coming up the middle, and by the time he sees it, Montana's throwing that ball. Clark hadn't even turned when Montana threw it. And look what happens when it's there, right there for the first down. And his ninth catch of the day for 112 yards. That's Dwight Clark. John Frank is in the game as the 49ers go with two tight ends. They send Wendell Tyler around the right side. Terry Kennard made the stop. Tyler went out of bounds. Ball was on the ground, but the officials say he was down, and the clock continues to run. We knew the Giants were going to do is anytime Wendell Tyler had the ball is try and knock it out, try and hit him, jar him, cause the fumble. I don't know why that's not a fumble. What, what, what did he do wrong? Well, let's look at it again. It does look, look like a fumble. I mean, he's inbound. He gets hit the first time. He's not down. The ball comes out. I guess the ground caused it. The ground can't cause a fumble. Tyler looking for some place to go. Hammers down to about the giant 15, 17 call it. Terry Kennard and Lawrence Taylor on the stop. Bill Walsh. You know, Bill Walsh has a term that he used yesterday, and I don't know exactly what it means, but I think it means something like, you know, you kind of just suck it up. He says you have to swallow hard sometimes. So you just call things and then you just swallow hard. That's coaching talk. I guess. But he used it about three times. We do this and we swallow hard. I'm sure fourth down, when he decided to not go for it, and kick, he swallowed hard then. Montana on a rollout chase by George Martin. Threw it in the direction of Roger Craig. Didn't get it there, and we're going to have a look again at Ray Worshing on a field goal attempt. Montana is the holder, by the way. Montana look, looks like he's having fun out there. You know, like you just play in the park. I mean, you run, you try and beat someone. And, no big deal. Worshing always says to Montana, you saw him pat him on the shoulder. Before he kicks, he always says, help me, help me. He never looks up. Never he looks at the goalpost. From the time he leaves the bench, he won't look up. He's had one block. And this one's wide left. And the Giants will get a shot with 315 left to play. Niners leading 21 to 10. I think he tried to get rid of this ball before Patterson from the outside is coming. He may have been a little quick on this because the minute that he kicks it, he knows right then that that thing's no good. He had the one before block. He may have been looking a little at 34. 49ers didn't score. They missed the field goal, but they ran off six minutes and 28 seconds off the clock will go out of a spread formation. Gets it to Tony Galbraith. Out to about the 25, a pickup of about five. Ricky Ellison on the stop. Sims has gotten him to hurry up. Just over three minutes. They go without a huddle. Bobby Johnson will get the first down. Now the Giants can huddle up. They can get a play sent in from the sideline. But the thing is, with two minutes and 51 seconds, that's a lot of time if you only need one score. With a score 21 to 10, the Giants have to think now in terms of two scores. So you have to get one rather quickly, then work in the next one. Sims has some time to look at the defense. They don't blitz. It's a four-man rush. Outside the Galbraith. Incomplete. That kind of play pass is not going to get it done. No, that's not the type of thing that they have to do. I mean, the only thing good about that pass is it was incomplete and stopped the clock. But I think that they have to think in terms now of getting chunks of 15, 20 yards. I don't think they have to throw it 70 yards, but they have to think in longer chunks to get that first one. Because you can't spend all the time getting the first one. Clock runs out. 246. It's stopped right now with that amount. Second and 10. He gives to Galbraith. A 
gain of about eight. Ronnie Lott, Fred Dean on the stop. I wonder about Ronnie Lott's shoulder on that one, though, Pat. He really, he really threw it in. Remember, he, he had that brace on there, and it's his right shoulder. I tell you, he's wearing bigger shoulder pads today, and he has that brace on him, but he really throws a shot in here with that shoulder. Watch it right here. Right at the end, he got it right on that right shoulder. McLemore is taking his place. Pass intended for Gray, and he couldn't hang on. It's incomplete. It's going to be fourth down. Ronnie Lott being attended to now. I think he, you know, they were giving him smelling salts there. Now, this is a fourth down play. Now, I don't know that they have to get the ball off the field. Now, they just have to get the first down. Then go back to work again. That's, That's the concern. 2-11. Now left to play. Sims out of the spread. Bobby Johnson. Pass complete. Out of bounds. Stops the clock. 206 left to play. Dana McLemore, who replaced Lott. Okay, now that was a good play. That that did two things. One, it got him the first down. Two, it stopped the clock. So now they get in one more play before the two-minute warning. This is a good area to take a shot. Take a shot here before the two-minute warning. Well, they send Gray to the right, and the other group to the left. 49ers beat the snap. That was Gary Big Hands Johnson who jumped off sides, and the Giants will pick up five because of that. Encroachment number 97 defense made contact before the snap. Five yard penalty. That was Big Hands Johnson. I think that was more an encroachment. Watch him right here. I think he got a start all the way into that backfield. I always thought encroachment was just in neutral zone. Watch Big Hands. He got that left hand up, that right hand by. He was three steps before the ball was snapped. That was a serious encroach. That's offside. Look, he's still smiling about it. See, that wasn't encroachment. That was offside. Lionel Manuel and Gray up to the other side. 49ers are offside again. Sim. Ernest Gray is hammered. The ball comes loose. 49ers have it. There's a flag down at the beginning of the play, however. Yep, Fuller knocked the ball loose, and it came up with it. That'll be against the 49ers. That was a free play for Phil Sims. The 49ers were off sides. He knew he had it. That's a good time to go for it. defense lined up in a neutral zone. Offside, five-yard penalty. That should be a first down. Let's watch it. Here's Fred Dean. They say, look at his hand right here. They say it's over the ball. But I thought Dwayne Ford right here, I thought he jumped. Watch Fred Dean. He's offside. Watch the bottom guy here. He jumped. Now he's in there. So they had a double dipper on that one, I think. That was Dwayne Ford and Fred Dean. And now we got the two. And gets it. Looks to Mullody. Mullody never looked at him, however. And it's incomplete. Someone should have yelled at Mullody to turn around or something. He looked like... You know, you know, he is eligible. He can catch a pass. He looked like he thought he was a blocker, but there was no one out there to block. San Francisco Police Department standing by. And security measures on their mind. Just like the Notre Dame backfield. Three horses. Three Sims gets it out to Mullody this time. And he gets out of bounds and gets the giant first down. Knocked out by Dwight Higgs. That's probably what they told Tom Mullody in the huddle. He said, look, if they're not going to guard you, they're not going to watch you, I'll just send it and throw it out there to you and get a first down. Gain of 13. Sims limping just a little bit now. But again, with one minute, 44 seconds, I would think that they have to direct at least the first two into the end zone. Try and get that score, then the onside kick, then go for your second one. They have all of their timeouts remaining, by the way, in this NFC Divisional Championship game. Sims out of the spread. Going for Manuel. Ronnie Lott, the defender. Manuel that looked to the inside. 
Pass went to the outside. So did Lott. He's a strong looking guy, isn't he? I tell you, he looks like a linebacker and he and he plays like a linebacker more than a corner. And I think that's one of the things that really helped this secondary in this 49er team when they drafted Ronnie Lott. Number one is he brought a, a certain physicalness along with him. You know, he gave him some toughness along with Jack Reynolds at the same time. That was when they changed. Mullody has it. Mullody hammered. Short of the first down, knocked out of bounds by Ronnie Lott. Looks like he's about a foot or a foot and a half short. Clock stops now with a minute 32 left to play. Zeke Moat must be injured, and that's why Tom Mullody is in here. They're not going with two tight ends. He's the only tight end in there. Again, he had run the out on the left side for a first down, and now this was a completion on the right side, and they're still inches short for third down. Sims is 24 out of 42 for 210 yards. He's had two intercepted. Third and short. Johnson. No good. He only got one foot down. Sims is coming over to say what happened. He only got one foot down. You hear that good call, good call. That's either one official telling the other official or it's a 49er sideline, but he only did get one foot down. He had the left foot, and he never got the right foot down. Here comes Moat back, limping a little bit. A fourth down, they're putting in Moat along with Morris and Carpenter, probably for a running play, Pat. Fourth and about a foot. They have all three of their timeouts remaining. A minute and 28 seconds left on the clock. Tim. Counts it. I don't think he got the first down. I don't think he got it. No, sir. The 49ers defense does the job. behind Brad Benson and William Roberts. We see it looks like a little push here. He cuts back and it's a nose tackle who's the first guy in there, but they really didn't get any movement. Watch your Bill Parcells. After you don't get it on fourth down, you don't need the headset anymore. And you don't need it, I don't think, in this game anymore. 49ers take over with a minute 24 left to play. You wouldn't have to say much about which sideline you're looking at. If you were wondering which team is ahead, 49ers 21, Giants 17, Roger Craig is stopped over the right side by Jim Burton. The honorary captain for the 49er game today against the Giants on this playoff occasion was one of their outstanding players, the linebacker Matt Hazeltine. Played here 1955 through 1968. Went to the Pro Bowl twice, 1963 and 65. Really, really a great player. He, he he was a great player. I remember Matt at Cal. I followed him. I was a fan of Cal when he played there, and then I was a fan with him with the 49ers and old number 55. <laughs> he used to make a lot of plays. He sure did. Watching at home today is Matt Hazeltine. Wish him well. Tomorrow, the NFL Today will begin it at noon Eastern time, and it'll be followed by what should be some thundering contest. The Bears and that great defense of theirs against the Redskins and that great offensive line and their good defense and Joe Theismann that's got all the elements. On second down, this is Tyler. Cuts back over the left side, not a first down. Lawrence Taylor tripped him up. Next Saturday, don't forget the doubleheader coming your way. Starts with NCAA basketball, North Carolina State against slow starting Kentucky. Folks in the West will see Oregon State against Washington. It all starts at 1 Eastern, 3 Pacific. And then don't forget, special edition of 
CBS Sports Saturday, the 60th annual East West Shrine Game, which is played not far from here at Stanford Stadium. It'll be live 3 o'clock Eastern Time. A lot of players in this game, by the way, who played in the Shrine Game Lawrence Taylor, Rob Carpenter, Joe Morris, Carl Nelson of the Giants, and Lendl Tyler, and Freddie Solomon, Fred Dean. Gary Johnson, Earl Cooper, just to mention a few for the 49ers. Well, it's been a up and down but successful season for the Giants. Montana today, 25 out of 39, 309 yards, three interceptions, and 64 yards rushing in two carries. They'll let us know when it's over. To Craig. No first down. Giants swarm trying to carry him out of bounds, led by Casey Merrill. And now the Giants call a timeout with a minute and three left to play. You know, one good thing for the 49ers about playing on Saturday is you get to get your game over with. You win your game. Now, one night tonight, you can really celebrate. Really take it easy because you don't know who you're going to play next week anyway, and you can't get ready. You watch them tomorrow. The executive producer of the NFL on CBS, Terry O'Neill. Senior producer, Charles Milton III. Good to see Red Eye on the road. Direction by Sandy Grossman. Joan Vitrano, the associate producer. Got everybody up and nobody back. Runniger back in punt formation. Nobody back there but the referee. Gonna roll dead about the 30. The Giants with no timeouts remaining and 53 seconds left on the clock. A 40 yard punt by Runniger. John, you were talking about the X. One good thing about playing on Saturday. Wonder if the fact that the Giants had to play in the wild card game last Sunday, had to stay out here all week and play a week later, or actually six days later, while the 49ers had the two weeks off in the rest period. Yeah, well, that's that's the difference between being, being 15 and one as the 49ers were, and nine and seven as the Giants were. I mean, that was the 49ers' reward for being 15 and one as the Giants' door because they were nine and seven. Sims with time. Tony Galbraith hammered by Todd Schell, 49ers. High draft choice. Mike Walter also part of it. They really like Todd Schell. Well, they think that, you know, they've used him on special situations this year. And if he becomes a starter, he'll really be something. Sims is hammered by Fred Dean. And this time it's Dean who stays down. And now Sims falls over him. And sits on him. Fred Dean is probably staying down because he's tired. It's been a long day for him. I will say one thing though about the 49ers. I really felt San Francisco ball. I really thought the second half they looked a lot fresher. They're giving the 49ers the ball on this. They said it's not an incomplete pass. It was a fumble. They said as, as he was hit, as Fred Dean hit him, they called that a fumble. But the rule is, if his arm's going forward, then it's an incomplete pass. I guess the referee thought that his arm wasn't going forward, that Fred Dean knocked it forward. At this point, it's academic. See, as he gets hit, I guess that is a fumble, huh? I think it is. He was starting to draw it back, but his arm had not started forward, I don't think. So the 49ers now on a spot to just run it out. I'm sure is exactly what they'll do with 22 seconds left on the clock and Montana just crouches down. Bill Parcells. Never happy when you lose, but it's been a rather satisfying year for Parcells, I'm sure. Coming over to shake hands with Bill Walsh. 